everybody welcome in to my remote viewing show that i'm doing tonight with my good friend glenn jackson you guys thank y'all so much for being here i got caught off guard there i was checking my phone to make sure my my stream was rolling tonight so we have a fantastic show tonight i have remote viewed paul bunyan all right. And uh, and I don't know a whole lot about Paul Bunyan or I didn't. But now I do. I know a little bit. Uh, and that's thanks to my good friend, Glenn Jackson, who is actually one of my Bigfoot field research teammates and uh, a good friend of mine. And he's trained in remote viewing, too. Uh, so this is going to be a really fun show. You know, we don't even know if Paul Bunyan or we didn't. We didn't know if he was even a real person or not um, or just a fictional character. OK, so. Um, before we get started tonight, I would love for you guys to uh, go visit my website. If you are interested in my work and the things that I do, uh, I have all of my shows listed uh, right on my website. I was going to say live. <laughs> They're on my website, thecryptidhuntress.com. Uh, I have live shows uh, every Saturday and Sunday night at Spaced Out Radio. Uh, those are on the Spaced Out Radio's YouTube channel, so you can't access them on my YouTube account unless you go to my playlist. Uh, but you can get them on my website, thecryptidhuntress.com. Also, um, I have a, a daytime show at 1 p.m. every Wednesday. Uh, and it's kind of a variety show. That's 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. And then, of course, tonight, 8 o'clock uh, Thursdays on uh, The Cryptid Huntress on YouTube. If you'd like to support the work that I do, I do have a, an Etsy shop, War Woman Goods. I want to thank everybody for your continued support uh, on my Etsy in my Etsy shop. You guys are awesome. Also, if you guys would like to access my remote viewing data, I do also have a Patreon, The Cryptid Huntress. Okay, on Patreon. I have a great Patreon family. I'd love for you to join. And, uh, and I post all my data there. A lot of times I can't discuss all of my data live on air because it's so sensitive and there's things that I just can't talk about. Uh, otherwise, my channels will get shut down. So y'all go doing that if you can. And, uh, and, and it's a lot of fun there. Also, more, more business. <laughs> y'all, I just got asked, uh, or I just found out today that I'm speaking at the Frogman Festival, the Loveland Frogmen, the lovely frogs with magic wands. Okay, I'm speaking at their festival in Mason, Ohio, March the 4th, 2023. You guys join me there. Also, Spaced Out Radio is having a fan party, May 19th through the 21st, I believe, Las Vegas. I'll be there. Okay. And the Journey to Truth Conference in Grafton, Illinois, May 22nd through the 25th. I'm just getting started, y'all. This is going to be a fun, a fun year. Very fun year. Okay. Well, let's get to our show. Okay. Let's get to the show because I know everybody is here tonight for Paul Bunyan, right? Okay. So before I bring up Glenn, I'm going to give a little overview of what um, Paul Bunyan the whole story behind Paul Bunyan. Okay. Um, and I titled this video, Paul Bunyan, Man, Myth, or Sasquatch. Paul Bunyan is known as a giant lumberjack and a folk hero in American and Canadian folklore. He was said to be eight feet tall with supernatural strength. Tales of the giant man originated in the oral tradition of North American loggers. His character and story were popularized in the early 1900s in a 1916 promotional pamphlet for a lumber company. His likeness is displayed across North America in a number of oversized statues with Babe the Blue Ox. Was Paul Bunyan a real person? Was he a mythical legend or was he a Sasquatch? Or a wild man? Could have been a wild man. Same as a Sasquatch, though. An interesting drawing 
was found, it is seen as posted. You guys, I put this in the live chat tonight. It's at the very top. I pinned it at the top of the chat. Uh, the Wisconsin Historical Society has a picture that was drawn of Paul Bunyan back in 1916. And he looks like a wild man, a very hairy wild man. Well, you guys, y'all know I had to remote view this. I remote viewed Paul Bunyan. And I have my friend, fellow researcher, Glenn Jackson here with me tonight to discuss it. Glenn Jackson is a paranormal and Bigfoot field researcher based in Georgia. He had Bigfoot encounters before he knew about Bigfoot. He encountered the Mount Vernon monster, the Alabama white thing. He's gotten zapped and has encountered a possible woman in black, like a man in black. And he's trained extensively in re remote viewing and has spent years researching in the field. Glenn is a critical care paramedic, certified firefighter, and hazardous materials technician. He's also an instructor of emergency medicine. And you guys, Glenn is like family. I love Glenn to death. Um, you guys will recognize Glenn. He was my first guest on A Glitch in the Matrix. He's also joined me on Space Out Radio. So welcome to the show, Mr. Glenn Jackson. Hey, well, Glenn. Hello there. How is hey. everyone tonight? Everyone is great. I have to say, I bet everybody's good. We have a lot of people in the chat tonight. I'm so looking forward to this. This is such a, a, a strange topic, Glenn. Tell me, tell me a little bit about <laughs> why you contacted me and was like, Jessica, you have to remote view this. What, what, what was your thinking? Somebody forwarded me, uh, it came off of Reddit. Somebody forwarded it to me and said, check this out from Wisconsin. And I was like, okay, usually Reddit's full of junk but so uh, i'm honest i was true but i pulled it up and i was like wait a minute yes this is from a 2000 uh, research piece that uh, this guy did and he was trying to determine if he was a real life human being being and then it went the conversation went down the rabbit hole like we always go and said well could he be a sasquatch well so i pulled it up and, <laughs> and as soon as i saw that picture i'm like jessica Jessica, <laughs> <laughs> this is right down your street because it was fascinating that, I, I mean, I understand, you know, it, it, we all grew up with, uh, you know, the cartoons or comic books and stuff and then the big old mythical tales. But, um, and that's all I thought it was, you know, guys, as I got older, I learned a bunch of drunks hanging around the fire pit telling stories, but you know, uh, <laughs> you're not, you're not talking about us, are you? No, I'm just kidding. We're not drunks at our no, no, Talk about Bigfoot cousin. field researchers. So. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, Your cousin that's on our team? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so, we I'll love you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's shared. Yeah. But, uh, we have yeah, a lot of fun. So, so I, thought, I thought that, you know, like I said, I, I really thought growing up it was uh, just a tall tale because, you know, they – Tall, the That's the tall. Word, tall. Yeah, literally <laughs> tall tail with yeah. a big blue ox. I have still don't know where the heck the ox comes from. But. I'm yeah, I'm a little confused about the the ox because I didn't pick up on I didn't look into the ox when I remote viewed Paul Bunyan. <laughs> but um, so so just a, a precursor, you guys, y'all do. I did not remote view the ox. Okay, uh, only Paul Bunyan and the character of Paul Bunyan, who this this character was. So, all right. So, Glenn, you sent me this message and you also sent me a link, which I did pin to the top of the chat tonight. So you guys can go in if you're on Facebook or YouTube, please go to the very top of the chat tonight and click on that link because that picture is copyrighted. And, and so they don't want anybody using it without their permission with the Wisconsin Historical Society. Uh, it's very clear they don't want anybody to use it. So, I mean... I did kind of use it. I distorted it a bit and I did use it on the thumbnail. So, but uh, I, I'll show everybody kind of what the picture looks like. Okay. This is what our thumbnail is tonight on the show. It's an artistic and, um, rendition. It's an artistic altered rendition of, um, oops, let me take that comment down. Um, so everybody can see it a little better. There we go. This fella does not look human. Okay, maybe Aborigines or like Neanderthal yeah. or something. Pardon my background I would, noise. <laughs> okay, that's not me. That's not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> she snapped on live okay. stream. <laughs> that's no. not me. 
That's my grandson. I, I don't have any French, children. I don't so. have a baby in the house. I do have a kid, but I didn't make baby noises. But um, but okay, so it was very odd, right, Glenn? It just okay. So the stories of Paul Bunyan. We hear that Paul Bunyan is what eight feet tall. Okay, eight feet tall, superhuman strength. Uh, mm-hmm. Worked in the woods, throwing logs around and picking up trees by himself. Uh, and so it, the story, it sounds a little crazy to begin with. It's like, I can hardly even pick up logs to put in the fireplace. Okay. Cause wood is very heavy. Okay. Very heavy. Now p- humans today probably aren't as strong as humans were back in the 18 and 1700s. You know? I would just assume, I don't know. We've been weakened. Okay. As a, as a general, you know, humans as a human race uh, a little bit, but Eight feet tall, Glenn. Does that sound normal, like a normal human to you? No, no, it sure doesn't. No. Not, and, and not then, with that kind of strength. Right. And then we get the picture of this thing that is a thing. I say thing. It's a man. Okay. Uh, with From 1916, this is from the Wisconsin Historical Society's drawing. This is in their record books, you guys, on their website as being Paul Bunyan. Okay, this is a, the the guy looks a little hairy. He looks big. Um, Just not like your average human. That's all. So that's why I did look into it, Glenn. I was so just, I was almost hypnotized by it. I was like, oh, (laughs) we got to look into this one. Okay, so uh, if if you guys are interested in seeing my remote viewing data, uh, it's pretty cut and dry, actually, um, on what Paul Bunyan is, because we Paul Bunyan is actually a character kind of that um, it was a, the story of a person who was passed down an oral tradition uh, for many, many years, uh, especially in the logging community. Um, I, I wanted to look into it to see if this was based on a true story. If this was actually a person. OK, um, a, an actual human that lived uh, during this time frame and uh, and kind of get look into what his role was, you know, uh, and that kind of stuff. And I got my answers, y'all. I got my answers. So if y'all want to see that, go to my Patreon. I'm going to go over some of my data tonight. Uh, And and Glenn, it's not a disappointment. We we got some good data here on this Paul Bunyan character. Okay, so um, let's see. Maybe maybe I should kind of go over a little bit of what the Wisconsin Historical Society says about him. What do you think, Glenn? Should we talk about that first? We should, yeah. Yeah, because my, my data won't make any sense unless we do this, actually. <laughs> well, okay. like, you know, like I said, when I, in our private communications, you know, this is this is from a factual based you know, thing. So, yeah. And then they have that picture. Wow. Yes. Yes. Hey, I want to thank all my chat. You guys, everybody in chat tonight, you guys are killing it in here. I can't keep up with all the comments. Uh, it's uh, hello to everybody. I want to say hey to everybody. And, uh, and if I don't pull the comments up as much tonight, it's because I'm concentrating. <laughs> okay. I have to, co- I have to concentrate on this one because a lot of times I just, you know, I go with the flow. Um, but with this one, I don't, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know anything about Paul Bunyan and I just, I, I, I need to focus a little bit tonight. So, but I see your comments. Thank you guys so much. And I will pull y'all up as I can. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, Paul Bunyan is America's best known folk hero, according to the Wisconsin Historical Society. Okay, around 1922, there was um, a a man named Charles Brown who collected tales about Paul Bunyan uh, directly from Wisconsin loggers. Okay, he summarized him in this way. Okay, all lumberjacks believe or pretend to believe that he really lived and was the pioneer in the lumber company or lumber country. Excuse me. Some of the older men even claim to have known him or been members of his crew. OK, so in Wisconsin, the location of one of his camps is stated to have been 45 miles west of Rhinelander. Bunyan was a powerful giant, seven feet tall and a stride of seven feet. OK, now, Glenn, you and I do Bigfoot field research. We're trained in tracking a stride of seven feet. <laughs> what does that that's sound a, like? That's pretty big fella. Yeah, <laughs> big that's, foot. That's a big guy. It didn't say the inches, the the length of his foot, right? But um, it said that he was famous throughout the lumbering districts for his great physical strength. So great was his lung capacity that he called his men to dinner by blowing through a hollow tree. <laughs> when he spoke, limbs sometimes fell from trees. I, 
I don't, it just sound, it sounds mythological, honestly, and, you know, according to their story. Um, it said that his strength uh, supposedly enabled him to clear North Dakota of its forest and, to, and he helped to dig out Lake Superior. All right. That's that's kind of a tall tale to me, you know, digging well, yeah. out Lake Superior. Didn't he also, I don't care if he dropped his axe and drug it behind him and formed the Grand Canyon. So. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, okay. But here's another thing. So the loggers were known for like sitting around the campfires and hanging out and competing with each other on telling creative lying contests, like tell like having contests to see who could have like the biggest fib or like the biggest story about Paul Bunyan. Okay. So um, it was just something fun, but nonetheless, he was a character. He was quite the character. Okay. So when tourism began to replace logging as the foundation of the Northwoods economy back in the 1920s, Paul Bunyan became a symbol of an idealized past, a very manly past. Okay. Very manly. Um, so people, promoters from all over the country, basically, and especially up in the North, um, began having festivals, putting up statues and, uh, and really embracing like the energy and the character of Paul Bunyan. Um, and even in the 1940s, he was used as a symbol and kind of an emblem of Americana, um, to fight the Germans is what, is what it said on their <laughs> website. Okay. Kind of like a world, it was, it was something to like hype up the troops. Like we're strong. We're like Paul Bunyan here in the U S don't mess with us. Okay. Actually, um, it's Captain America. Well, Paul, well, it's, <laughs> well, the Wisconsin historical society says it was Paul Bunyan. So, okay. Um, but, but he was used to advertise everything from construction lumber to loaves of bread. All right. Super Americana. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and I think he was pretty well known in Canada as well. Um, but as the traditional lumberjacks died off, Bunyan migrated from forest bunk houses into the pages of children's books, where he symbolized American power and modeled an ideal masculinity. I mean, I tell you what, he's a lumberjack. He's a masculine guy. You know, um, let's, let's go through some of these pictures of the statues that we have around the United States. Okay. I, I'm not exactly sure where these are. Okay. But I assume they're up North. Um, everybody knows the lumberjack and the blue ox. Okay. Um, the, the big giant. Okay. Glenn, you, you're also a remote viewer. I'm sure you follow my shows that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. I've gone rogue. I've started doing a whole bunch of weird remote viewing targets <laughs> publicly. Okay. <laughs> Gone I went rogue. rogue. I'm sorry. I did. Okay. <laughs> and it's all out of good fun. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've been remote viewing a lot of things such as giants. Okay. Um, and a matter of fact, we've had giants in Georgia. There's one reported uh, the Okefenokee swamp attack of 1829. Some people I, said that was a, a Sasquatch. That's the, the state that you and I live in. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's been cartoons about him. You know, here's more statues. Uh, somebody got real creative with their chainsaw there and did that one. Um, oh yeah. Oh, and, um, cartoons, advertisements. Um, I mean, the only thing I know that can pick up a tree like that would be a Sasquatch. <laughs> Agreed. Right? Agreed. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so I've, I've been looking into a lot of things like Bigfoot, uh, Sasquatch, Giants, Wild Men, and uh, we have giants. We've had giants all over the world, mm -hmm. and uh, that ate that Okefenokee Swamp giant, that was actually a giant. It wasn't a Sasquatch. Um, I did pick up when I remote viewed that. It was an actual giant. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe, maybe this guy could be a giant, you know, um, giant of Kandahar. I looked into that. It's a thing, Glenn. You know, we've had giants, giant skeletons mm -hmm. all over mm -hmm. the world yeah. and in Indian mounds all over the country. Um, yes. Smithsonian has taken them and they've just completely disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, they're in a vault somewhere. They're in a vault. They're <laughs> somewhere. Who knows? Maybe the giants are awakening right now. I don't know. Uh, there's a reason that we've been called to do this, this show. And, uh, and so I don't know what that reason is, but... It's, it's a bridge into something that's coming. I don't know. Um, it's just a, to, to shed the light on these things. Right. And yeah. um, 
And, and there's a reason for it. I just don't know what that is yet. But uh, however, let, let's get into my data if you're ready. And let, unless you got unless you got some comments before we start. No, no let's kick it because uh, you're spot on. I mean, even well, we mentioned I mentioned this earlier, the Nephilim. I mean, there's oh, there's, yeah. So there's that possibility. There's all kinds of possibilities. Yes, there's all sorts of possibilities. OK, uh, OK, strangeness. so high strangeness. Right. And that's our specialty, Glenn. Right. So like, <laughs> it's not very often that I do have um, my friends that actually are trained in remote viewing with me come on my show uh, and talk about remote viewing with me. And so I, I love this. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, well, Glenn has actually sat through many, many sessions where we have uh, been taught pretty extensively remote viewing over the years. And um, it's not it's not easy. OK, y'all. confirm that I was slapped with a ruler a time or two in my hands. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all were. We were all put on the spot and sweated bullets. when We didn't know the answers to stuff. Right. Um, I remember those days. Um, but, but however, it, it was all worth it. It was it was all worth Absolutely. it. It was a lot of fun. Do you remember yes. the the target and I was the only one drawing it and the certain person come over and was like, you've got it down pat. And I'm like, this is nothing. This is nothing. And he said, flip it over. You're looking at it upside down. And as soon as he did, I was like, holy cow. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's a lot of times when we don't know, you know, because our, our targets are blind. And so what we do is we get coordinates, which are uh, a set of numbers. And we don't know what those numbers are. And if you guys have been watching my shows recently, especially with Barry Littleton, I have um, I have been given blind targets. I have no clue what they are. Just some numbers. I taught Barry Littleton how to assign me targets. And I've been knocking these targets out the park. I'm just going to say, Glenn, I'm so proud of myself. I have one that's coming up next week that'll blow. I keep saying it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> I have one next week that is like, I can't even, I, I am so shocked at what it was. And I'm so shocked at the information I got. Um, I'm actually going to probably be talking about that with Barry at the upcoming Journey to Truth podcast. I mean, not podcast, conference. Okay. Uh, because it's something that has to do with, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go there next week. Y'all tune in. OK, uh, but however, let's yes. let's get to this thing. Let's get to Paul Bunyan. OK, right. Bunyan. Uh, he's got a Bunyan in the oven. OK, I don't know. This was crazy. All right. So this was um, I picked up, Glenn, that this was a real person. This was actually a real person. Uh, and I kept hearing this is based on a true story It's very much based on a true, true story. OK. Um, now I was also picking up that this was, he was a giant, but he wasn't a giant human. <laughs> I did pick up that he was, um, part beast. He was like a wild man. He actually was a wild man. Okay. So wild man can mean several different things, but I was picking up a more of like a Neanderthal type looking thing is what I was seeing and animalistic in nature. Okay. I also picked up that he was used, this is going to be, this is kind of tough to say, but he was used kind of almost like a slave. He wasn't the leader so much that people claimed that he was in all these stories. He was more like a servant, okay? And he was used, it was almost like, I don't want to say abused, but I guess that's kind of the word you could use. That's not what I came up with, but, um, but he was used for hard labor and it wasn't because he wanted to. OK, um, and so I did I did pick up on that, uh, but I, I did get that he was more like I was getting words like servant and things like that. Um, and so which reminded me of a lot of different stories that we've heard over the years, OK, of wild men, OK, and wild women in our history. OK, um, like. Let's say, I mean, we'll, we'll go on the list after I get done with my data. We'll, we'll talk about some wild men and wild women that we've heard about and their stories about. But um, but yeah, I did pick up that he was more of. He was he wasn't like the head of a team or whatever. I got that he was part of a team, but he was more of used for his um, brute and for his strength. And um, he kind of had to do what he was told. OK, that that kind of a deal. Uh, but I did get that he was a wild man. He was not all he was not a pure human, y'all. It wasn't a human. Um, and uh, and yes, 
I was I was actually getting a picture of like Andre the Giant in my head, a very hairy Ooh. Andre the Giant uh, <laughs> when I was remote viewing him is what I was seeing. Uh, but he had a very, very hard life. And I was picking up also that he was, I, I kept hearing stolen, like almost like he was kind of taken, um, mm. which, which correlates to some of these wild man stories that I've heard about over the years that we're going to touch on here um, in just a minute. Uh, because my, I, I didn't, I mean, I, I got more data I, I don't really feel comfortable talking about a lot of it because it was kind of like he was forced into doing a lot of the stuff that he did, but, uh, but he was based on a true person. It, it really did happen. And, uh, and it was, it was historical. It was historical, Glenn. Um, everybody, uh, the loggers, he, he was such a, it was, it was such an anomaly. Okay. To have this giant. I mean, he was literally a giant. He was like a Sasquatch. Yeah. Okay. He was, a, he was, okay, so what, what we're going to call it is like a type four Sasquatch, okay? So people who are in the, the Bigfoot community, if you know anything about like the, the types of Sasquatch, Barry Littleton and I had a conversation about this, and, uh, and Barry uh, and I discussed this. He looks like a type four Sasquatch, would, which would be a Neanderthal type looking mm -hmm. Sasquatch, yeah, that that is what that is what I saw. That's what that picture describes, uh, what it looks like, and that is what my data uh, came up with. So, yeah, that, Paul Bunyan. We'll never look at Paul Bunyan the same now. I mean, no. I won't. I don't know my audience. You guys, um, I want everybody to go look at that picture for yourself. It's in the. I've pinned it in the very top of the comments tonight, and uh, and so go to that. It's the Wisconsin Historical Society. Click on that link and y'all go see the picture of uh, Paul Bunyan. And, and, his, and it, his name was not Paul Bunyan. <laughs> okay. That was not his name. That was the name that the illustrator and the publisher of those logging pamphlets had put out. Uh, so it, I didn't come up with any name. I didn't have a name for him. Uh, but, I, but I did get that he, he was, was a He worked for the person. government. It was his alias. <laughs> <laughs> it was an alias. <laughs> no. Uh, but it's... Um, it, it's it's really cool. It was it was really cool looking into him. I do feel um, I do feel kind of I, I feel I felt bad for him as I was remote viewing it because he did not seem to, you know, I don't think he knew better. He almost it was almost like he was kind of simple minded a little bit. I know that sounds yeah. kind of bad, but he was very primitive. Primitive is the word. OK, oh. very primitive, but a, gig, a gigantic humanoid. OK, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, if he was as primitive, he probably didn't understand a lot of the things even at that time that the I'll say probably not we did, and so and it, it does surprise me that he would be taken advantage of being such a huge fella. So, but yeah, exactly a gentle yes. giant. Yes, he, he seemed like a gentle giant. Yes, he did. And uh, and I have some pictures here of something that is similar to what I saw. Okay, we've all got that hairy uncle. I know. I got an uncle who's super hairy, okay? Or I used to. And uh, and he, it, this is more similar. I don't know who this is in this picture. Please pardon me. I don't know where I got this from. But uh, yeah. hey, that's my cousin. The, the, what I was seeing was very similar to that, okay? Very similar to that. That doesn't um, surprise me, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, he didn't look all human y'all. He was, he was not, he was not all human. Um, so He's now, now in, if you go to Wikipedia, this is the picture that they're going to show you when you go to Wikipedia, there's, they say, well, it was this guy. His name was, um, Fabian Fournier, 1865. Th they claim that this was who Paul Bunyan was based off of. I don't buy it. Uh, his shoulders aren't broad enough. He doesn't look like he could lift a he's whole tree. He's too skinny. He couldn't lift a tree. Yeah. He's a twig. Yeah. You know, no offense. You know, no offense. I'm just saying. Picture, I was like, that's a blink and shaved. That's what <laughs> I was thinking. Yes. He's too, he's too, he's too frail. Looking, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't look anything like you would picture a, lumber, a lumberjack. That ain't no lumberjack. Uh, no. He ain't going to hold many pancakes. So. He he might have been driving a choo choo train across the the country or something, but he wasn't. He ain't no lumberjack, uh, in my opinion. So, yeah, no. But I I immediately picked up that it was more of a like a type four Sasquatch uh, type of being. Okay, and uh, and that's not 
completely unheard of. Okay. Not completely unheard of because who else have we heard of uh, historically that were wild men and wild women? Well, we have, uh, we have wild men going back to the beginning of time. And, uh, and I do have pictures of, uh, you know, out of biblical texts or, or just texts basically, right. Um, of, of wild men in the woods that are giants, um, you know, uh, statues, you know, of like hairy men, super hairy men, a little, little hairier than normal, like monkey looking primate people, humanoids, um, and then you got to think like back in, let me get my notes out. Back in the 1800s, there were a lot of wild men reported. Okay. Uh, now in British Columbia, where my friend Dave Scott's from, okay. Um, British Columbia and Canada, there were back in 1884, um, they had a, a loggers or somebody, I don't know if people that worked on the railroad or somebody, they claimed to have captured a wild man and they named him Jacko. Okay, and I think That's there's right. a picture floating around the internet uh, where it looks like a, a monkey man. And they, I think he, I didn't pull the picture up because it looked, I, I think it might have been dead, but I'm not sure. But I did find this picture online that somebody drew uh, where they captured Jacko. They said they kept him uh, captive in a jail cell for several days. People came for miles to check this wild man out. Okay, they came, it was, we didn't have TV back then. No I say we as if I lived back then. <laughs> Uh, but people didn't have TV. They didn't have the entertainment was like live, live action, you know. So um, they, the, so that was that was the talk of the town. Everybody came over to see who Jacko was. Okay. Also, in 1850, uh, in Russia, in Georgia, Russia, there was Xana. Okay, the wild woman, right? And uh, and she was said to have been captured. Um, she was a towering woman. She was about six foot six. Uh, and they captured her alive. She was taken to a village and sold to a nobleman. Okay. He named her Xana. She remained in captivity for the rest of her life. Um, she was, she looked like a kind of like a primate a little bit. She was like a humanoid, like primate, uh, very muscular, had thick fingers, broad built shoulders, and an enormous chest. Um, she was known for her ferocity, her gnarling, her sneering. And um, pe people, like kids, used to throw stuff at her and stuff. And she hated wearing clothes because she got hot all the time. Uh, she ended up eventually being let out of her cage that they kept her in. And um, it's a very sad story because um, she started, they started feeding her alcohol and uh, which led to her being molested and abused by mo multiple people, men. And she ended up having multiple children, uh, which uh, some of those children uh, she would take to the cold creek and dump them in and they died. OK, and uh, but she had at least one or two that survived. Uh, and to this day, she actually uh, not to this day, I can't say to this day, but um, down the line, uh, she did have grandchildren okay and and these are said to be two of her grandchildren right here um and so and she was she was known as a wild woman okay so um you know it, historically we've we've had wild wild men and wild women in yeah, feral people feral people and uh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say sasquatch maybe yeah. what we would, what we would describe as Sasquatch or e even like um, what I was seeing with the um, Paul Bunyan, the character, the, the person that Paul Bunyan is based off of. It's like a type four Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, yeah. And obviously they have been, they were able to mate with humans, I guess we could say, and, uh, and produce offspring. At least Xana was. Okay, and uh, mm -hmm. and and there's one, Glenn. Uh, you and I, I believe you were there. You were down in uh, Florida in Chattahoochee that time when we went and we we inspected, we researched that private property. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't talk about the people's names that live there, but they've been on the Animal Planet and all these other shows. Stacy Brown's been there. He got some very famous footage out of their um, off their property, but um, but we went and and did some research in Chattahoochee, Florida. 
uh, on some a very active property, Glenn and I. And uh, there's a very famous tale of the Ochizi Pond Wild Man down there. Are you familiar with that, Glenn? No, this one I was not. Okay. Um, well, this is, is uh, though I have no picture of the Ochizi Pond Wild Man, uh, but uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a a wild man that was allegedly captured. I actually have some notes here. I think, uh, but it was a wild man who was spotted eating berries and waiting around in the water. They have swamps down there. Uh, I think like the ever I don't know if the Everglades are up there. I think the Everglades are down south. Yeah, they're but uh, but he was in there. a creek or a pond or something. Uh, locals were hearing blood curdling howls at night, and uh, an armed search party was launched after the winter had passed because after the the cold weather passed. How cold can it get down in Florida? By the <laughs> yeah, way? I was just thinking that. Yeah. Come on, come on. What was it? Sixty. <laughs> They were too cold to get out. Okay. Um, no offense to my Florida friends. But, uh, who knows? It might have been colder back in the 1800s. But uh, they went out looking for the beast in order to, uh, to capture it or kill it and drive it away because they had been seeing the, like a beast, um, a wild man. Uh, the, uh, the search party found him. Uh, they came across some sort of a wild man covered in hair in the tangled vegetation of the dark swamps. And on August 18th, 18 foot 80, August 18th, 1884, there was a news report. And I'm going to quote this news report. The wild man captured in Ochizi Swamp near Chattahoochee and carried to Tallahassee did not belong to a Florida asylum. And that all inquiry proved unavailing to identify him. He had been swimming, excuse me, in Ochizi Lake. From island to island, and then was taken um, entirely destitute of clothing. That means he was booty naked, emaciated, and covered with phenomenal growth of hair. He was a hairy guy. Um, he could give no account of himself, and the theory is that he escaped from the asylum of some other state and spent his time in the woods living on berries. Okay. Well, um, well, he was actually taken to, from what I, I remember, Connor Flynn, Bigfoot Anon, told me that he was taken to the governor of Florida, I believe, in Tallahassee. And, wow. uh, and, and the governor's like, I don't want him. I don't want <laughs> yeah. anything to do with this thing. I don't know what this is. And, um, and so he was um, taken to a, a hospital in Chattahoochee. I think it was a mental asylum or something, uh, but it was some sort of a hospital. And they say that he's buried there on the grounds of this hospital. So, oh. uh, but he was a wild man too. So that would be a place to do a ghost hunt. Yes, I think so. I guess so. I don't know. We did, we did some research down there. We did investigations. And, and when we do our Bigfoot field research, a lot of times we're down, we, we do like, we incorporate the ghost hunting methods as well. Right. The, <laughs> EVPs and the ST session. Because you never know what's just going to pop up. That's where I yeah. was yoo-hooed. <laughs> you were what? You hooed. I, was what um, I can't remember who it was. Was it Trey or somebody had the uh, oh the radio that cycles and you can hear voices through it and it'll answer questions. Um, the ST session. Yes. 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 And, that was the uh, ST session. Yeah, somebody you hooed me twice. <laughs> it was a woman's voice, clear as day. Like, well, that's nice. And well, that's it, nice because when I did it, they were they were saying they didn't like me and they wouldn't talk and they they hated me and they were being very, <laughs> whatever voice that was was very rude. So I I, I good day, sir. I was how like, good day, anybody, sir. I'm done with yeah. you. How could anybody? Yeah. Hate you? you well, he just not, he doesn't know me. It's okay. He doesn't know me. I was on in his territory, I guess. Who knows? But that was at the meadow, you know, when we and, and Glenn's for all for all my audience, you guys are uh, very familiar with the meadow project. Perhaps that's uh, one of our research areas. And Glenn is a uh, man. Glenn has been researching that area from the very beginning. And uh, also Bob. Hey, Bob is here. Grumpy. Yeah, Grumpy's, Grumpy's in, in the that. chat. What's up, Bob? Hey. I commented <laughs> last night on a, on a post yes. that I'm, uh, I'm chapter 13. So... <laughs> Your chapter in, the book, in a new in book? The book, the meadow, yeah, in, in Trey's book. So oh, chapter 13, good. that's I, my I'm claim. I'm one of those chapters, too. <laughs> I, I think I might have a chapter. I'm, I'm featured in that book somewhere. Uh, um, that was, uh, I'm pretty sure it's 13. Well, yeah, that's me. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, well, Bob, Bob is actually the head of the North Georgia Cryptid Researchers. You guys might know him from that show, Killing Bigfoot. And what is it? Bigfoot is real and, and stuff. So Bob, Bob's awesome. We love you, Grumpy. Thank you for being here tonight. And he's um, not but, really uh, that grumpy. So He's not really grumpy. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and, and Bob was actually also the head. He was the head of the, I think it was Region 5 North American Dogman Project, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. But that is, uh, yeah, I just had um, Nick Valente on my show yesterday. And we talked about uh, the North American Dogman updates. So that was a lot of fun. So y'all check that out here at the Cryptid Huntress on YouTube. Uh, and my show is are becoming more and more. Have you noticed that? My what? The, dogman, the sightings, the Dogman is becoming more and more. You know, it, it, it's really interesting because, it, Glenn, between you and I, there's not a whole lot of evidence of Dogman compared to Bigfoot, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people spotting Dogman. Uh, I'm, I've still yet to see a really good video of a Dogman. <laughs> Just going to say. I've seen one I'm waiting. picture that somebody sent me from up in uh, Chattanooga area, somewhere up there. And it was taken from far away. It's probably one of the best pictures I've ever seen and. I, I of a wish dog I still, man? I, yeah, yeah. I wish I can't remember who sent it to me now. It was another group, and I, because my first comment was that that thing has to be uh, photoshopped or something, and then they sent me like the series of shots, and then it zoomed in, zoomed out, and I'm like, wow, it, it looked like from a distance a German Shepherd on a human's body. I really? Mean, it, yeah. You yeah. better find that and send it to me. You better yeah, find well, it. I need to see I, that. I have one. a look for it because, yeah, I wanted to. That was probably the best one I've ever seen. So I'm used okay. to the circles. Well, yeah, I, I don't do circles. We don't do that at the Crimson Huntress. <laughs> uh, we don't do circles. I still we do them. not do red circles here. Okay. So this is a, um, you're, everyone is safe from red circles here uh, <laughs> because if I don't see it, I don't post it. Um, at all. We don't, we don't show that. I just don't entertain it. And it's not that I don't believe that people didn't have an experience. Mm -hmm. It's just that we have to maintain our credibility as researchers here. And, yeah. uh, and so if it's something super obvious, we'll show it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's what I always reply back. I'm like, Hey, I'm glad that you can see that you were there. You saw it. And perhaps it didn't capture quite the way you saw it. I can't see it. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and Anthony, I understand it is 20, it's 28 in Florida tomorrow. So yes, it does get cold in Florida. I, I will retract my what statement. Part, I'm what sorry. Part of Florida? I, knew, wow. I, I figured Anthony or somebody in Florida would be in my chat tonight. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> I love you. You're the best. Um, so yeah, if 28, that's cold. It's actually that storm that just came through here, Glenn, is bringing mm -hmm. a lot of cold temperatures. So um, yeah, we got to buckle right. down. Yeah, it's going to be cold I here too. Yeah, I got to go to the um, mountains this weekend. I don't want to do it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Glenn, you have a lot of um, experience with not only the the Bigfoot, uh, Bigfooting research and things like that, but you've had a lot of personal experiences uh, as far mm -hmm. as the Mount Vernon monster goes. And, uh, and you've seen some wild men of your own and even the Alabama white thing. OK, yeah. so if you let's talk about that for just a, a second, because I, I am so intrigued by all your stories. I have actually been in the field with you when we've had some really weird stuff go down. But uh, but yeah, you, you have some firsthand experience with wild men. Tell yeah, me a little bit about it. I seem to be drawn to these things. Uh, They're drawn yeah. to you. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's for the, well, once you open your mind to it, I believe there's a connection, you know, so of some kind. Yes. I don't understand it, but um. Yeah, when we were kids, that was the, uh, you know, there was there was a wild, hairy man that roamed the area in uh, uh, the woods of Mount Vernon, just outside of Washington, D.C. And, uh, you know, as kids, we were like, ah, oh, nah. And so we did what kids do, and we went in the woods, and then we didn't go back in the woods after we saw it <laughs> for a long while. So, <laughs> yeah, it uh, that was my first experience with one. Um and then uh, I think in Tennessee, I probably had some experiences um, that I didn't know what they were. Um, but now that I've learned more, I, I think that uh, it was quite possibly uh, Bigfoot. And uh, in fact, I was just talking to um, I'm going to try this weekend and meet up with somebody and see they've got some activity up in uh, East Tennessee. So see what's going okay, on. Okay, East there. Tennessee. Whoa, we got to talk Whoa. about East Tennessee for a minute. 
Okay. Oh, I ain't because, from around there. <laughs> no. Okay. So Glenn, you know, I I've done these shows. Hey, Barry, Barry, Barry Littleton's in the chat. What's up, Barry? He and hey, I Barry. were discussing the type four Sasquatch. That is Paul Bunyan, y'all. Paul Bunyan is a type four Sasquatch, mm -hmm. according to my data. Uh, yeah, it, look the, wild at the man. facial features and everything. Very I much. agree. More Neanderthal looking than yep. anything. And so Barry Littleton, actually, Barry has some videos on these types of Sasquatch on his YouTube channel. You guys, please go to Barry Littleton on YouTube and uh, check out his channel. And uh, and I'll, I'll try to post some of uh, his videos on, on my social media tonight after we get done with the show. Um, but let's go back to East Tennessee. OK, so East Tennessee, you're actually from Tennessee, right, Glenn? Sort of. <laughs> kind of. You're from there. Yeah, well, yeah, I lived there for quite a while. And uh, when I was younger, uh, my mom would send me to work. Well, not work. That didn't sound right. To spend time with my family in Tennessee. My uncle was a veterinarian. And uh, so I spent most of my summers growing up in Tennessee before I moved there later as an adult. Yeah. Anthony, I'm not planning on it. But if I get invited, I'll come. Okay. 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 Um, okay. So primal cry, absolutely. Bearzilla. Okay. So I was um, asked to remote view some unseen animal attacks that happened in Tennessee and in Texas. Okay. And I actually uh, incorporated them into a show one night uh, because Ooh. people were very suspicious that there was a mm -hmm. dog man on the prowl in East Tennessee. Right. Well, when I was remote viewing it, I was I, I was seeing something that looked like a bear and I called it a zombie bear. OK, and I was so embarrassed that I, I had to, I said that on, on air. I was like, it's a zombie bear killed. The, it was Amber and um, Amber. And I can't remember the guy's name, Steve or John. Uh, but there were there were two people who were actually both killed on the same road. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Aaron's, I think it was his name or Tony Aaron's Tony and Amber. I'm so yeah. sorry, y'all. I can't remember names. I had Tony a copy Aaron's of the medical and report and it was crazy. So you know you're familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got I got the medical report. So Tony. Thank you, Christy. Yes. So I um so I remote viewed it and I, I just saw a zombie bear, zombie bear. And uh and I was seeing it and, and it was one and they were blamed on a, a pack of wild dogs, killed both of them, is what the reports were saying. But the entire hospital staff was put on um, restriction from talking about it. There was a gag order in place by a judge. And so um, people could not talk about it. It's typical Tennessee. Yes. Uh, Amber, her body, she lost over 40 to 50 percent of her flesh on her body. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, and she lived for five days after she was attacked. Um, I remote viewed both of those attacks and um, it was a zombie bear. <laughs> okay. I know that sounds really crazy, uh, but I didn't understand what that meant. Okay. But then I started getting, I saw a, a, a report. One of my, one of my um, audience members, somebody that, you know, is I, interacts with me online. She sent me an email and said, Jessica, your zombie bear could be mm -hmm. this sent me a link to Israeli news and they were talking about how the government, the military had been working on a program to change the DNA of humans and mix it with bears. Okay. Oh, and wolves. No, not yes. Either. Yes. And that they had actually um, done that to, they were putting them out in pairs a female and a male so that they could reproduce. And they had dropped two of them off in East Tennessee and they were like human bear hybrids. Yes. Why does that not surprise me? I know. Yeah. It's so crazy. But right. It just it sounds so crazy. And I was so embarrassed to even talk about it. <laughs> but then I get information like that. And this is like uh actually the way that it came out was that the um someone with like the CIA, one of those three letter agencies, had gone to Congress to try to get funding or to stop the funding for that program or to do something with the funding mm -hmm. of the program that they were doing. Uh, and so it, it it became public knowledge. OK, and, uh, and uh, but 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 it explained it said that they were wreaking havoc on people down there in mm -hmm. uh, the wildlife and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and there's a movie coming out. I'm not sure if that's the name of it or not. Bearzilla or not. And it's made. Yes. And I'm pretty sure it's made about a true story in Tennessee. Is um, it? And the claim was that and I do know part of the story is true that a guy parachuted out of a plane at low flying altitude and he had too much cocaine on him. He was a drug <laughs> smuggler. And obviously he hit the ground. Well, that's and different. Poof. That's not what and, I'm talking about. No, 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 I'm saying, but then the bear got into it the cocaine did. and went berserk. 
Okay, that's a different Beerzilla. Well, I know, but it's still cool. <laughs> that's Bear Montana. That's Tony Tony Bear Montana there. <laughs> Tony Bear Montana. That's not to be confused with Tony the Tiger. <laughs> oh my God! Imagine the 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 carnage that that bear would leave behind. That is just that's it's not what I'm talking about though. But that's a good story. <laughs> well, no, but I was going to say that's 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 their cover now. That information is starting to slowly be released. Oh. They have Hollywood make a bit. I'm trying to put oh, the dots together. That's a good there. point. Yeah, that's a, and, that's that. Ma- it makes sense. And okay. I do know for a fact that there was a person that fell out of the sky with a large amount of cocaine on them and went poof because it happened in a field right near a farmhouse uh by us so but i don't ever rem- i never remember a bear going crazy like that after there was no bears in this part of the area but but yeah so i knew part of that story was true i thought the other part was embellished but we, you know, the Mount Vernon monster when it first came out, since everything's right there around Washington D.C., you know, with the swamp, yeah. they want uh, they want some kind of conspiracy theory so bad, and that's what everybody said. This they're experimenting with the humans, uh, and we well, we know they have. I mean, obviously, it's public knowledge they've experimented with humans. So, um, yeah, that was what everybody thought. They do it, was. it all the time. Yeah. yeah, they do it all the time. And, uh, and let me just tell you something. I uh, woke up the other morning to uh, a message that I had a YouTube video come out and, uh, and people are discussing uh, underground. Okay. This is another thing with my remote, you know, y'all know I do these remote viewing shows, Glenn. I've gone, I've gone crazy with these remote viewing shows. I'm having so much fun, Uh, but I, I, I remote viewed the Brown mountain lights and Barry was on my show with me. Uh, discussing it. And, uh, and I said, you know, a lot of these things, I'm like, I can't get around it. There's underground bases underneath these mountains. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will at, on all the bases, all, all the mountains, just about that I've ever looked at. There's pyramids, there's bases, there's ET involvement. And I woke up to a, a video, I think it was like Michael Saul or somebody. And they're, they're talking about all these meetings that are going on with the intergalactic federation. And uh, they're all underneath the mountains in the blue, the blue Ridge mountains exactly what i had been remote viewing so yes you're welcome i take a i'm going to take a bow for that one i know for sure that there are these bases so uh my my data is just it scares me how spot on a lot of my stuff is um and and it comes out later you know and and it might be stuff that i'm embarrassed to talk about publicly because it sounds so crazy but then this this information leaks out and uh boom just I was let me right. know when you're ready to do the underground highways. <laughs> yeah, so. underground highways. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, they're a thing. We'll do those. Well, we'll do those next. I don't know. I actually have this one really amazing target, uh, this blind target I did for Barry. We're going to do that next Thursday. I'm not going to announce it yet. Maybe at the end of the show tonight. It's just about time to be at the end of the show. I've well, no, because I've got somebody else looking into it. Another remote viewing friend of mine. So I can't announce it tonight. Um, but yes, yes, Donna, underground tunnels in the mountains. It's not just tunnels, it's facilities. Yeah. And having grown up in the Washington, D.C. area, I can assure you that there are tunnels underneath of us that we are not aware of. I can't oh, confirm yeah. or, I can't confirm or deny I've ever been escorted off of a military base, but <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> that sounds uh, like you yeah. might have. I don't, I don't know. know. I know a guy, but you know, as kids, you do stupid things. But uh, yeah, how old yeah. were you when you got escorted off this base, Glenn? Well, if it had been me, I would have probably been around oh, 12. <laughs> I was a teenager, young. Oh, no, I wasn't a teenager yet. Well, growing well, up, this is when you saw bases. The... Yeah, yeah, that's it, where you it, saw it, the Mount Vernon monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And growing up around a military base, especially one where they have such high spooky factor. And having family in this spooky world um, just makes you, I guess I've always been cocaine bear. That was it. And <laughs> that was when uh, I've always been so inquisitive. I guess that's where I got it from. And so, yeah, I mean, I remember one time we went four wheeling in an area when my buddy first got his driver's license. And uh, we were like, did you just read that sign? And he's like, yeah. And it was, I forget exactly what it said, but it basically said you're at a minefield. <laughs> we were like, uh. So, yeah. And you didn't read it? Bear friends do drugs. Well, we did as we went by. <laughs> and I was like, uh, maybe we should stop now. So, yeah, and, you know, as a kid, you go out and explore. And 
Washington DC was nothing like it was or is today like it was then. I mean, when we saw the Mount Vernon monster, I mean, of course, you know, the, the park service hasn't changed. They haven't given up any land, the airport, George Washington mansions, the Woodlawn plantation, all that's still there, but everything else is suburbia and growing straight up like New York city. So, but when we were kids, you know, in the eighties, Oh no, I'm, I guess I should tell the truth. Probably seventies, but, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was more of, uh, it was, it was, we, and you could still go out and do stuff at night. And I don't know, Barry, to answer your question. Um, but I, 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 I'll, we'll go there in just a minute. Finish, okay, yeah, finish your story, it, and then I'll tell you what Mount Adams is. What I know. Okay. Of. Okay. Yeah, but it was so much different then because, like I said, it was more rural. You know, it wasn't as big, and yeah, the number one job wasn't the U.S. government then. So, yeah, that wasn't the main the main uh, employer there in the area. No, they were still farms. Yeah, yeah. it so. is now though, huh? Oh just gosh, like yeah. DC. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, well, what Barry is referring to is Mount Adams, and I believe that is um what I was remote viewing for the show last week, I think when I did the um, holographic mountain in CME, mm -hmm. Peru, uh, okay. there's a, a holographic mountain uh, that's near a SETI ranch in Washington. It's uh, Southern Washington near Oregon. And, uh, and, and Barry has actually seen with his own eyes, uh, seen what looks like spaceships going into the mountain or like kind of, you could see through the mountain as the, the craft goes into oh. it or behind it. Yeah, so it's holographic. They say there's a an alien hangar there uh, that that spaceships come in and out of, and all sorts of weird stuff. It's interesting. I don't doubt it because you remember there was an area we researched that some of the remote viewing showed up some of that stuff in Georgia. So, holographic mountains in Georgia. No, it wasn't holographic, but there was a there was a base where they went in and out of the mountain. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not uncommon. And uh, who did we remove you that? Because I don't remember that one. Uh, no, well, no, it was uh, our instructor and uh, his monkey friend. So okay, yeah, because we don't talk about our remote viewing targets usually very often. I don't talk yeah. about those on air. Okay, oh. I do my like I said, I went rogue. I'm doing my own thing. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> but still mountain. But, so. Yeah, it was just some mountain, some yeah. mountain. Well, but you know, the mountains up in like North Georgia and like North Carolina and Tennessee, they are so full of high strangeness and such high mm -hmm. weirdness. Um, I mean, that's where we have a whole lot of Bigfoot activity, right, Glenn? I mean, mm -hmm. I have, we have more Bigfoot activity there than any other place that I've ever researched. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I have more activity there than, yeah, anywhere I've been. I'd like, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to going to Tennessee to see if I get anything, uh, hopefully this weekend. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's going to be fun. And we got some research weekends planned. I think uh, I, I hope I see you out in the woods and here in a couple of weeks. I don't know. I hope the weather's not bad, but um, we're in the south. It could, it could thunderstorm or tornado or <laughs> we could have a blizzard or it could be <laughs> yeah. like 100 degrees in the next couple of days. Who knows? Oh, gosh. Yes. <laughs> It depends. It depends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's, um, yeah. People in the chat are like holographic mountain, you know? Yes. We, we, there's a lot of holographic weird stuff going on. It leads mm -hmm. me to ask you the question, Glenn, do we live in a simulation? I have actually questioned that multiple times <laughs> myself. I've I have went too. To, I have went to the matrix and been like, can you tell me? And I keep getting rejected. So, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, well, the, yeah, the Matrix. But, you know, really, well, well, I mean, what is reality? I mean, when you think about it, because your perception and my perception are two different ones, but they're the same. That's a very good point. So, I mean, yeah. I, it's uh, who, somebody, some philosopher instructor somewhere said, how do you know, like, let's say we'll just use my sister who lives on the West Coast. How do you know she's doing anything right now? Well. I don't know. She's like, well, maybe she's not until you activate her. And I'm like, well, that's kind of a weird way of putting it. And he's like, but her reality is the last you saw her. It's like when you go vacation, I don't know, we'll say the Gulf of Mexico, and you don't go for three or four years, and you go back, and there's all these hotels and everything. You're like, this is nothing like I remember it. 
Yeah. Well, the program changed. Somebody pressed a button. It's a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> you know, like, but yeah. that but it's a glitch in the matrix. That's why I named my show a glitch in the matrix mm -hmm. for my daytime show. Uh, because I feel like we are the glitch in the matrix. We are exposing weird stuff. Uh and uh Yes, Carla, I have been told to leave an area when I'm remote viewing. As a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, when I was remote viewing uh, CME Peru for Barry, who's in the chat tonight, uh, I was told to get the heck out of there. Uh, also, I've been told to leave a couple of other ones, too. And so guess what I do? I leave. <laughs> I get out. I wasn't uh, kidding when I said because, I was kicked out of the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I as humans, we are very powerful beings. Okay. We have every right to be wherever we want to be in a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of, a lot of places. Uh, but when you're dealing with, when you're remote viewing, you're dealing with a lot of different energies. Okay. Yes. And um, you have to be very mindful of that. And you have to have mm -hmm. a lot of respect. Okay. A lot of respect. And so, and I do, and I, I'm full of respect, R E S P E C T. And so, uh, yes, I, um, I've experienced so much weird stuff. I don't need anything extra weird in my life. So yes, I do step back and, uh, and you, I stop remote viewing. Have you triggered an alarm yet? Have I triggered a what? You know, they have alarms in certain areas for remote viewing. Did you do that? Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. I, don't, I don't talk about everything on air, Glenn. We'll talk off air. I don't know. I, I, I have gotten a proverbial knock at my door. That's for sure. So, um, what we do, Glenn, is not very safe all the time. And so, um, but, but you know what, for whatever reason, I feel called to do what I do. And, uh, and, and like I said, I always have fun doing it. And when I don't have fun, I'm going to not do it anymore. <laughs> exactly. So for now, I'm having a really good time. And, uh, and y'all saw, I'm, I'm speaking at all these different conferences this year. I'm actually actually speaking at the Georgia Bigfoot conference on April 1st too. I forgot to put that up there. Hey, April um, Fool's. Yeah, you guys can come out and see me. I'm going to be talking about remote viewing. Barry and I are going to be talking at the Journey to Truth podcast. We're both presenting their not podcast. It's their conference, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> we'll record it and play it back later. <laughs> I mean, it's their Journey to Truth podcast conference. Um, and so, yeah, uh, you, we'll be live and direct all this year. I'm going to be a lot of places where people can come meet me personally and uh, and share your stories with me. And uh, yes, I, I do. I love it when people send me um, suggestions for remote viewing targets. Um, I do have a list and, uh, and I, I, whatever looks the most interesting, I, I do like to look into those. Um, yeah. So uh, I can't, I, there's so many comments. I am trying to, I know I'm trying to concentrate on oh. my interview <laughs> and my comments at the same time. So um, yes, y'all send me comments. If, if anybody has any, any suggestions, y'all send those to my website, the uh, a little box pops up right when you hit my website and you just send me a message. It goes to my email. All right. So uh, send me those and I will give you credit when I do that show. If I, if I see your message and I do a target, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some credit as to who sent me that target. But cool. um, but otherwise, Glenn, uh, you have something really cool going on with your coin <laughs> collection. Let's talk about that for a second. And let me pull okay. this up for the audience. Tell me what you got going on. OK, so as I said, the first thing I ever experienced was the Mount Vernon monster, which later in life I discovered or what I believe to be a juvenile Bigfoot. And so I went to dig in and researching, and there's not a whole lot of information out there about the Mount Vernon monster because he was only, or she, whichever it may have been, I think it was a he, but at any rate, um, was only there for a short period of time. I believe now with what I've learned that it was passing through, like going from one tribe to another so that they didn't have so much interbreeding or maybe there was some male <laughs> territorial issue or whatever. But I believe he was either following the Potomac River, <clears throat> he ventured off somewhere of the Appalachians and got into there. Um, you know, that's the largest source of water there. So that was kind of where I went with it with my information. But so I looked and looked and looked, and there was only a few pictures. Um, and I couldn't think. I was like, wait a minute. I remember as a kid, we drew, we had one. You know, we drew one. Well, I, I one didn't with draw the it, teeth. But, the yeah. one of the white teeth. Yeah. He had like yeah. the whitest teeth. Yeah. Yes. The I most beautiful that. and the shiniest eyes. Yes. Um, those are the two that are vivid. I can still see it. Um, so I was like, well, I want to do something cool so that I can share it, not only share it with the world, but to remember it by, you know, and so to pass the kids, the grandkids, whatever. So I came up with the idea of doing a coin. 
And of course, if you know me, you also know I have a sense of humor about things. So there, that is the actual <laughs> drawing um, of him in front of the Mount Vernon mansion. And so um, I decided, you know, I'm going to, I like to do things where it plays on one another. So it obviously, I, I know that's the mansion. A lot of people wouldn't know that's the mansion, but the coin was done in my high school's colors. And then I thought, well, they didn't catch him, but I can put him in barbed wire. So it's just little things <laughs> like yeah. that. I guess it's my art. You had to jump a barbed wire fence to get in there. <laughs> right? Could have been. Yeah, could have been. Yeah. <laughs> could have been illegally trespassing. But, but, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah. And then um, I was like, well, you know, would it even make this cooler um, if I can make it glow in the dark? So I met a guy and um, he, he was like, oh, this is easy to do. And I'm like, you're kidding me. And so I love those teeth. Man, the teeth. <laughs> I know. And, awesome. That is the it's most really- that is the most realistic picture. And like I said, we we had that drawing that I don't remember which one of us made it. One of us as kids made it. And so I was like, that's that's it. So I wanted to that's do the over by it. So yeah. I so, like to go in the dark the best. That's my favorite, actually. <laughs> I like and, that. And then, like I said, in order to keep it in my little sense of humor, it's a coin. So on the back of it, I put George Washington on Patty. So Okay. Is that <laughs> wait, that's not it. This is a different one, right? No, that's the same, the same coin. One? It's two sides. It's the yeah. same one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it glows in the yeah. dark on both sides. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. Yep. Oh my yeah. gosh. Now what yeah. tell me how big are these coins and, and where can we find these? Can we buy these? Yeah. Yeah. Um Okay. Yeah, they're up for sale. Um, because God knows somebody might skin my hide if I don't sell some. Uh I wanna I like those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But yeah, um, they're on. I've got a space. I was reading that down there. I've got a uh, uh, coin page on Facebook you can go to and check it out. Okay. And of course, you know, also with my love of the fire department and stuff like that, I do other things with patches. And I got yeah. some cool football sports stuff. And I'm coming out with the girl power line. So girl power right. yeah, yeah. and you got a little disc golf frisbee golf whatever you call yeah, that stuff yeah. that's your disc thing golf. i like yeah. that yeah i still gotta drag you out there and see if I you know. can see if I'll you look can some tail i'll come out there and play sometime uh, oh i'm waiting <laughs> on it i'm sure you'll probably beat me is it full, I, is it a full contact sport that's my question that's only if it was i wouldn't play it with you because you beat my tail so <laughs> No, uh, it's full contact. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that reminds me of that old Miller Lite commercial. But uh, yeah, full contact girl, girl power. Woman power. That's right. right. <laughs> no, you throw you throw frisbees at a basket instead of hitting the ball into a hole. So it's a lot of fun. It gets you outside, and um, th- for some reason, disc golf world loves um, the uh, Bigfoot community. I guess it's because you get lost in the woods looking for your disc so much. So uh, you can go to uh, the Sport Cat Challenge Coin page on Facebook, um, on Facebook, and message me there, and I take all the the Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. I don't know. I guess everything. Um, take everything but IOUs. Whatever. So. <laughs> anything but IOUs. Yes. Uh, but that's yeah. awesome. Those are how big are they? Are they like um they're like two and a half, like three tiny? inches? No, they're pretty they're, okay. They're pretty big. Okay. They come in a little plastic uh, oh, bag, nice. so they're sealed up. So yeah. Yes. Well, I hope that everybody in the audience goes and checks that out tonight and, and tomorrow, whenever y'all are watching this, whatever day, time is an illusion. Y'all know if y'all watch my shows, time is an illusion. Uh so everybody go check out his coins. Um, again, that is Sport Cats Challenge Coin Studio on Facebook. Glenn, man, and, and everybody follow Glenn. He's um, Sport Cat, S P O R T C A T, Sport Cat on social media. Uh, and Glenn, don't you do some shows with Grizzly? Um, yeah, we've been yeah. sitting on a, a show um, because some people have had some health issues, family members, and stuff. So I haven't been able to get organized okay. and. Uh, but in uh, February, we're going uh, to do, uh, it's called Para, which is me, paramedic, our okay. normal guys. Uh, and so we're going to discuss uh, anything from real life events to you know, current topics, comic books, disc golf, and of course, 
our favorite sub well one of my favorite subjects the paranormals the bigfoots the et spooky stuff so so there'll be a good mix of everything in there it's kind of kind of be like a a mashup show of just a little bit of everything so and it's not going to be one where um we well where i want to be taken serious 100 percent of the time you want people to take you serious. I'm just kidding. Nobody takes me serious. I have a hard time taking myself seriously, Lynn. So, yes. <laughs> I never do. I, I, if, I laugh at myself more than anybody does. I know y'all are laughing at me half the time. It's fine. I laugh at myself, too. You it's know, fine. If, you, if you can't have fun in life, what's the what's the point? I mean, really. We're only here once. That's right. Well, that I know of. I haven't figured that mystery out either, so. Yeah, and and well, I can assure you, she would probably Judy chop me to the throat or something. So. <laughs> Judy chop. Yeah. Don't do, don't go Judy chopping. Nothing. Don't need no Judy no chopping. Judy chopping. So, gosh, my Tennessee show. Oh my right. gosh. So, oh man, well, this show. I'm gonna go this get me a glass fun. sweet tea. <laughs> yes, don't go Judy chopping. Nothing. Okay, tonight. Uh, just like Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan was out there Judy chopping them woods and those trees. Uh, Joe, Paul Bunyan, the wild man, the wild man, the Sasquatch type four. Okay. I believe you're correct. Um, yes. Sasquatch type four. Uh, so you guys, and, and I don't have my charts up here to show everybody like what the different uh, types of Bigfoots look like, but it looks like more like a Neanderthal type. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, when yeah. you picture, when you picture the, uh, the face and everything, it was identical to that picture from the Wisconsin, uh, Story. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. just the nose was what got me with the I, I want to call it the smushed face. I know it's probably not correct, but you know, it, it yeah. had that wide, broad forehead with the smush, and I was like, oh, Jessica, yeah, look at this. Yeah, caveman. Love you, love. Yes, I played rugby for my college. Okay, so I used to tackle. I love tackling. I love getting tackled. I don't care. I uh, not not now. I'm like an old lady now. I can't. I I break a bone. You're not a day over twenty four. So I break a hip or something. I don't know what would happen if I did that today. Uh, but I I mean I used to love. I love full contact sports personally. Um, now I just watch my son do that stuff. Like now I got my kid in it. But uh, but anyways, you know, after yes. watching Monday Night Football last week, I don't know that I don't want to do have kids doing that. Uh, and I'm oh, paramedic. Yeah. No, I my know son does it. Yeah, I, was, I, I had my I had my son in full tackle football at five. Okay, yeah. So we're we're tough over here, you know. I'm not gonna clothesline in Bigfoot in the woods. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, you do. And I'm anybody just... that thinks that uh, what happened on that game was uh, something that could happen all the time, it's very very rare. So. Oh, recently, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not trying to discourage kids from sports. That's the best thing. Get them out in the woods, too. Get them out, Get them in, out the in the woods. woods. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, but but we don't I would never take my son where we go uh, researching too. but yeah. I will I will take him out there camping anytime. That's a good thing. But mm -hmm. uh, we also have to look out because Glenn, you're part of the team that we've actually, you know, documented the portal and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we know the dangers of the field. OK, so um it's uh we gotta be careful. Just keep an eye on those youngins. Okay. Keep an eye on the Absolutely. kids when they're out in the woods. Yeah, but take them out there nonetheless. Absolutely. Just not late at night. Teach them hunting, fish, and all the good stuff. So. Leave it up to the researchers who go out there and clothesline Bigfoot. Okay. If you need not backup, Bigfoot. call her, not me. I'm scared. <laughs> right. uh, I'm a cat. I got nine lives. I didn't use half of them, and I'm running the other way. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, you don't run. None of us run, Glenn. No, I walk. We, don't don't run. we run towards the danger. Okay. Yeah. And you're a fireman. You're a fire, you're a firefighter. Yeah. So you run straight into the danger. Yeah. Right. It's a little okay. fun. It is. Well, this has been a lot of fun tonight, Glenn. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, well, thank you. You're so much fun to hang out with. And uh, you know what? Uh, it's like when I hang out with my family and like my southern accent comes out. <laughs> That's how I feel tonight. Like my true, yeah. my true self is showing tonight with you. Yeah. So I hope yeah. everybody's enjoyed this. <laughs> you make me goofier than I normally am. So you yeah, you're I'm normal and I'm really too. odd. Because so. <laughs> we're comfortable with, with each other. Because we're like family. Yeah. Yep, uh, absolutely. And, and speaking of family, you guys, tonight, please tune into Spaced Out Radio. You know, uh, I have a show on Spaced Out Radio on Saturday and Sunday nights. Off the trails. Dave Scott has some breaking news tonight. Uh, he's got a huge panel coming on of just top brass, uh, big names in the UFO community tonight on Spaced Out Radio. You guys, please tune into that. 
And uh, I, I think government has come out with some kind of uh, proclamation or some kind of report on UFOs. It's probably not all it's cracked up to be, but they're going to talk about it tonight. <laughs> I don't know. The show will be awesome, though. Uh, but the disclosure, I'm telling you all, it begins with people like Glenn and I, people that are out there in the field doing the research. Um, tune into the YouTube channels, the people that are out there researching. That's where you're going to get the real information. OK, um, Glenn, thank you so much for being here. I love you to death. You're you the too. best. OK, you're amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you to everybody who's in the chat tonight for being here. Uh, this is always so much fun. Y'all make my life just so much happier and brighter. And uh, I hope you guys will join me this weekend on Space Talk Radio. I do have shows this weekend, Saturday and Sunday night at 10 p.m. It's going to be an amazing, fun weekend. All right. Well, Glenn, thank you so much again for being here. Thank Come you. back and join me again. And uh, good night to everybody in the audience tonight. I'm sending y'all so much love and light, and I will see y'all this weekend. Thanks, everyone. Right. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Y'all get his coins. All right. Good night, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>